Algebra 2, Mastery Quiz number 8, Factoring. Remember when factoring completely, the very first thing you should look for is the GCF, the greatest common factor. So we have two terms here. So let's see if they have anything in common. And we always want, again, the greatest common factor. So start with the 4 and the 24. Okay, what is the largest factor, the greatest factor they have in common? Okay, 2 is a factor, but it is the great. It, it, is it the greatest common factor? No. So what else goes into 4 and 24? Well, hopefully it's obvious. It's 4. So we're going to pull out a 4. Okay, what else do they have in common? If we look, we got x squared and x. So they're both, both terms are sharing x, so we're going to pull out an x. Okay, now remember, when we are factoring, we are, in this situation, doing the distributive property backwards. So when we do that, what's left inside the parentheses? Well, if we pulled out 4x from 4x squared, we're left with x. If we pulled out 4x from 24x, we're left with 6, and there's a plus sign there. So, we're done. 4x times x plus 6, those are the factors for this function. Okay, next. In this situation, we again only have two terms. And what we can do is we can look for a greatest common factor. Well, they do have a common factor, but in this problem, the only thing they have in common is 1. So, and we're not going to pull out a 1, because that's not going to change the problem in any way. Okay, so what else do we see? Well, I see an x squared. I see an 81. And if I think about it, those are perfect squares. And I also see a minus sign in between them. So the first term is a perfect square, the second term is a perfect square, and there's a minus sign in between them. This is a special case. Okay, it is called difference of two squares. And if you run into these, it should be, you should be able to factor these really quick. So you make two sets of parentheses, take the square root of x squared, which is x, put that in each set. Square root of 81 is 9. Okay, and again, there's no middle term here. If there was, it would be 0x, okay? So that means in one of these, we have to have a plus sign, and the other one, we have to have a minus sign. Okay, a positive 9 times a negative 9 gives us the negative 81, and if we add those two together, we would get 0, and there is no middle term, because it would be 0. We're done. That one is factored completely. Okay, the next one, we have x squared plus 8x minus 20. Okay, now there's nothing special about this one. This is just an ordinary trinomial that we need to factor. Do note that the a in front of x squared is a 1. Okay, these should be, you should be able to factor these fairly quickly without having to do too much work. Okay, we're going to make two sets of parentheses. We will put x in one set and an x in the other. Now, this is where you have to remember factors, okay? Back in middle school, maybe even grade school, okay? You take the last term, negative 20. We want factors of negative 20 that will give us a sum of the middle term, which is a positive 8. Okay, well, remember factors are what you multiply. So factors of negative 20, I can take negative 1 and 20. But if I add those together, I will get 19. Well, that's not it. Again, I want positive 8. Well, if you think through your factors, hopefully you come up with positive 10 and negative 2. If I multiply those together, I get negative 20. And if I add those together, I get positive 8 is what I want because that's the middle term. So my factors are x plus 10 and x minus 2. 
that one is complete. Okay, the next one, solve for x by factoring. So this time we're actually going to find out what x equals. You'll notice in this problem we have an equals 0. So this is one where we want to solve for x. Now please remember, solve for x, you have to start by factoring. So just like the last problem, okay, we make two sets of parentheses. We'll put x and x. Okay, now you'll notice I use negative 20 here again. So, but this time, I want to know factors of negative 20 that give us a sum of negative 1. Now, where did negative 1 come from? Okay, well, if you look in front of the x, there's a minus sign. And remember, when you don't see a number, it is implied that that is a 1. So we're looking for a negative 1. Okay, so think of your factors for negative 20. Well, we've got a positive 4 and a negative 5. Okay, 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And if I add those together, I get negative 1. Okay, negative 1. So those are my factors. So we've got plus 4 and minus 5. However, we have to go one more step. Okay, solve for x. Now remember, when we're solving for x, we are looking for what is also known as the x-intercepts. We are also looking for the zeros. Okay, x-intercepts, zeros, roots. Okay, all of those things mean the same thing. So we want to know, well, what will x plus, what will make x plus 4 equal 0? Okay, I hope that's obvious. One step, x equals negative 4. What will make x minus 5 equal 0? x equals 5. Again, those are the solutions. Those are the x-intercepts. Those are the zeros. Those are the roots. They are all the same thing. So, okay, here is one of them, and there is the other. Okay, that is going to carry out all the way through factoring, getting that connection between solving it and what does it mean when we graph it. That's it for today. Thank you.